Rainmaker. This mode is one of the fastest and most volatile modes in the game. So today I want to show you the best, most optimal Rainmaker route for every single map, as well as shortcuts, which can allow you to get points in ways you didn't really think would be possible. I hope you enjoy the video and be sure to subscribe for more. Let's get into it. For Reef, the only big note is that you want to try to skip as much of the uninkable surface as possible by jumping and then jumping to the left again, as it's just slightly faster. The middle route on Muscle Forge isn't really that worth it as it's incredibly risky. Instead, when going on the right, jump on this left side of the block to save a little bit of time and be a lot harder to hit. Starfish right and left side are basically equal. One's a little bit faster, but the right side is generally a little bit safer. Also jump up the ramp, and it's easy. This is a really situational and hard shortcut, don't recommend it. The left side on Humpback is pretty much a death trap unless if opponents are really far on the right or wiped. Going right side is a little bit easier and still pretty fast. Inkblot is incredibly simple. Climbing the right wall is a little bit faster and then you just go straight for the goal. If you ever go straight forward on this map, I swear to god I am blocking you. This shortcut is really hard and also probably a glitch, but if you pull it off it's incredibly funny and gets you a lot of points. Surgeon, you have the right or left side better than main ones. The sponge almost never works, and unless if they're wiped, you should never go for it. Left side is a little bit easier, as it, the Rainmaker has a lot more potential to just force people out of the way. If you need points for a lead, you can simply jump over the gap to get the points you would get from normally going over. You can also skip the ledge and just jump normally, which is faster, but a little less reliable. The big thing for Moray is making sure you get both rails, as jumping to the second one gives you a ton of points and is the fastest way to push on this map. You can also jump incredibly far to the right. If this wall is inked, it's a much more reliable path, as while it's a bit slow, you basically can't really be killed there unless if someone drops off the ledge. However, make sure you climb the wall on the top as it goes to 6 instead of 7. Port Rainmaker is terrible. Don't play this map, it sucks. Manta, the right side, is a little bit faster and easier to push through. You can use a shot to ink the path in front of you and then run. Simple way to the goal. The situational, you can go far right and drop underneath. It doesn't give as much points as you think it does though. If you have run speed and the opponents aren't on left, always take it left. It is one of the easiest ways to get a 20 plus point lead. If you don't have run speed though, just go right. The middle route on Snapper is significantly faster, but the left side can be used if you want to do a slower push. Generally, this way is the better one. All the points for walking across normally by simply jumping over the gap, which is both faster and way harder to die on. As you can see when I climb over, this is how long it takes for me to get points. Yeah, pretty crazy. Also, this left side jump is reliable and easy, so it's nice in some situations. For Black Belly, the middle route is usually the fastest since the block is really nice for getting points. The right side is alright, but a bit more prone to Stingray. Left side, same thing, and it's even slower, but is sometimes useful when the defenders are too far to the right. By the way, old Black Belly used to look like this. Yup, I can't believe they changed it either, it looks fine. Mako Mart is a tough one. The right side is way faster, but also way riskier. I'm opting to show it off for its speed. If you do go left, here is another very situational jump you will almost never use. Walleye Warehouse is another case of avoid the uninkable as much as possible and go forward. That right block is basically just as fast as going left, and left is more reliable for points. Realistically though, whenever you're pushing, you really just want to bonk your head. It was the same thing in Splatoon 1, I don't know why this exists. Challendorf, the right and left side are pretty much the exact same in terms of going through mid. Taking it on glass is fine if you have run speed, in which you go top right. Also, this is a situational, but honestly pretty useful jump because it skips the stairs.
Marijuana Mole is another painful Rainmaker map that you really shouldn't play. However, if you do, just know you can make the jump from right here. Gobi Arena, you really want to skip the stairs, so simply jump up and go to the left on this grading path. It's much faster, more reliable, and easier to go through. The stairs are a death trap. Everyone on Piranha Pit goes top right on the first conveyor, but realistically, you really shouldn't. The one in front is faster and much easier to get points from, since it goes directly to the pedestal. Camp Rainmaker is more reliable to go left side, but if you do break it through mid, take the rail and jump top left. It's incredibly fast and really safe. Technically, this jump can be made without the rail, by the way. Wahoo Rainmaker has a fast path through mid, and the left side is a lot safer. Realistically, pick each one depending on what situation you're in and where the defenders are positioned. Albacore, you want to go left side, and this is another another case of avoid the uninkable surface. Use the shot here to paint the block and jump on top left. Faster and more points. You can get points without climbing up this ramp. It's not that useful, but it's there. Anchovy is pretty simple, there's not that much to say for it. Skipper Rainmaker, you want to go on the far left side as the block is slower and way easier to die from. Hug the wall, it's a bit safer. Also, never go far left, just climb this wall. Faster, safer, easier, and more points. This jump from mid is super useful for points and skipping the uninkable terrain. One last thing to note, with the Rainmaker, you can Rainmaker strafe by basically charging the main weapon, which is much faster than trying to go normally. You can't sub-strafe with the Rainmaker, so this is an essential technique to learn. It's really useful for dodging and stalling, and its primary use is surviving this thing. Yeah, it feels pretty good when you pull it off occasionally. That's all the tips I have. I hope you've enjoyed the Rainmaker paths and shortcuts, and let me know if I missed anything in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day.